Hey, it's me, Vicky Mary, with a cup of tea. Or, hola, soy yo, Vicky, otra vez. Because this video, I'm going to put on both my YouTube channels, because this video is about learning Spanish. So it's going to go on my Learn Spanish YouTube, but there may be some of you there on my Vicky Marie Chats YouTube that want to learn Spanish. So it's New Year, New Language. You know, New Year is always a time when people want to start studying. You know, Christmas, got Christmas, New Year over with. There's still quite a long time before spring. So people, you know, it's, it's a bit of a miserable time of year, isn't it, in the New Year? January, February, etc. And so it's a good time to study because the weather's normally quite bad. So you're probably inside more than you would be other times of the year, etc. So for those of you that are watching on my Vicky Marie Chats um, YouTube, if you're newer subscribers, you may not know that my uh, my day job or my proper job, if you like, is I'm a Spanish teacher. I've been a Spanish teacher for more years than I care to remember, let's say. Um, and I live in Spain, of course, and I've learned Spanish when I came here. And I've taught Spanish now for many, many years, about approximately 20 years here. And during this time, I've taught Spanish to many different nationalities, not only British people, but my method of learning Spanish is through English. So explanations are in English. So all my students, although they're not English, I have many Eastern European students, I have many um, Icelandic or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? So Norwegian, Danish, uh, Polish, etc. All nationalities, but what they do have in common is they understand English, they speak English because I explain how to learn Spanish. It's with explanations in English, that's what I do. And the books that I've written during this time, I've written five books, five different levels, Break the Language Barrier on how to learn Spanish, and they all have explanations in English and the answers in the back. I've also written a few, uh, several um, bilingual storybooks. So you've got a little story about dogs, and uh, in English and in Spanish, so you can compare uh, the two languages. And they're a bit of fun and also just to help you put it into context, put Spanish in context. So I have books for all levels, from beginner to advanced. Uh, my levels go from, as I say, one to five. So whatever level of Spanish you are, um, there'll be a, a book for you. Um, we're going to look at them in a minute. Now, first of all, you're probably thinking, or you may be thinking, well, why would I want to learn Spanish? So I just want to let you know the benefits of learning Spanish, or to be honest, any language, really, but Spanish in particular is a very, very important language. So the first way, uh, the first reason, of course, it exposes you to a new culture. It, expose, it, uh, it expands your horizons, if you like. And it's just a, you know, for any of you who like to learn, why not learn Spanish or any other language? I mean, as I say, a lot of these can fit into, um, you know, various sort of reasons for learning various languages, not only Spanish. But there are some reasons why, why Spanish is extra important. So you're exposing yourself to a new culture. This can help you not only in your social, personal life, but in your career choices, you know, understanding other people's cultures. Uh, it can help with job opportunities because, you know, not many people are bilingual. Um, and so if you speak Spanish, it's an asset if you're looking for work being able to speak any other language, but particularly Spanish. And I'll tell you why, because Spanish is the fastest growing language in the um, USA. Spanish is widely spoken all over the world. So it's, uh, you know, as far as being understood, English, of course, we, uh, if any of you are out there who are English speakers, 
um, we do get a bit lazy, don't we? Because we know most people speak English. You know, we can go to mo most countries in the world, can't we, and speak English and be understood. And that makes us a bit complacent, I think. You know, I found when I was at school, I was always good at languages, but they weren't valued. You know, it was like, well, yeah, oh, so you've got 98% in your German exam. What did you get in your maths? <laughs> you know, it's like the languages were just like, well, you know, what would you need another language for anyway? Uh, that's how it is in Britain or English speaking countries, unfortunately. Um, but of course, if you go, you may want to go and live in Spain or work in Spain, or you might want to go to America. In certain parts of America, Spanish is almost the first language. You know, so it's very important uh, language and it's spoken in countries you wouldn't imagine, like the Philippines. Um, you know, it's it, it, there are countries that you would not imagine that Spanish would be spoken, but it is because, of course, the, you know, we talk about the British Empire, but the Spanish Empire, the conquistadores, they went all, you know, uh, all over the world. Um, and of course, South America, you know, that's uh, a huge... Uh, part of the world and, and Spanish is, you know, the language, obviously, the first language there. So it's a very useful language. It's more useful, really, that, you know, probably uh, French people won't like me saying it or German people, but it is more useful than those languages, you know, and um, because it's spoken more widely than those languages these days. So, yeah, unique job opportunities. Way, if you're a traveller, if you like travelling, it helps you get understood in different countries. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it is a common language with a lot of people. So, and it, so that if, if, if what you're doing is looking for a job, that differentiates you from your other job candidates who don't speak any, any other language. So it's, a, it's an extra to put on your CV, isn't it? Now, another thing that's very important, so whether you're looking for work or not, if you're not looking for work and you're retired maybe, or you, uh, you know, you're just looking for something and interest to take up, learning another language has been proven to improve and increase your cognitive health. So it keeps your brain cells moving. It staves off dementia and Alzheimer's. And this has been proven. It keeps you sharp because you... You know, learning a second language can boost cognitive functions such as memory, mental clarity, concentration. And these benefit, benefits, of course, then can apply at work or at home. It doesn't matter if you're looking for work or if you're retired or what you're doing. Everybody wants to boost their mental capacity, don't they, especially as they get older. You know, and it's just like going to the gym. You know, if you don't, if you don't exercise your body, then it sort of... You know, it's, it always becomes harder than the next time you go to the gym if you haven't been for ages. And it's the same with using your brain. You know, you don't use your brain for ages. It's harder then to get back into it. But, you know, you've got to get it going again. So it can give you more mental clarity, better memory, uh, in, increased attention to detail, etc. So a healthy mind is important as well as a healthy body. So, yeah, and as far, as I mentioned before, travel, you know, tr it can make travel easier because if and I found that when I went to Portugal earlier last year, it, early in the year last year, when I went to Praia de Luz, being able to speak Spanish was, it was so similar to a lot of the Portuguese people that we came into contact with. They knew Spanish at least well enough to understand what I was saying. And when they spoke back to me, I could understand what they were saying because of my knowledge of Spanish. And a lot of them did speak Spanish. So, you know, you'd be surprised. And it got us out of, uh, well, one little scrape that we had. Being able to speak Spanish came in very handy with the police that we had to deal with briefly. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, helps. And then it can also make you give you a desire to learn other languages. Why not learn languages? Maybe not even Spanish. Why not learn any other language? You make you'll make more if you're working or even in your social life. You make more connections. You can connect. You know the world's a small place now with the internet, etc. You can go online. You can connect with people of all different uh, cultures, 
um, you know, through diff through Spanish. I know people here in Spain where I live where uh, they may be British. They have neighbours who are perhaps Belgian. These Belgian don't speak Brit British, don't speak English, but speak a bit of Spanish because they've learned Spanish so they can converse in Spanish. So it, it just generally expands your uh, opportunities and horizons expand your job skills as i said to put on a cv and it boosts your creativity you know so creativity can um sorry learning spanish can improve your creative creativity so there's just a few reasons to learn spanish and that's online i'm talking about more there um but you know if you actually go to a spanish class you will meet other people as well. So it's a way of meeting people too. You know, any classes that you do are always a good way of meeting people, aren't they? Okay, so I'm going to show you my books now because there are different ways you can learn Spanish with me. I have, a, as I said earlier, I have a series of books that I'm going to show you. We're going to look at my books. Um, this is Break the Language Barrier Level 1. So this is for beginners or beginners with a base. And this explores the present tense in Spanish. Now, all the books, explanations are in English and the answers are in the back. Now, you can, these books, you can learn Spanish at home with these books because along with my YouTube videos, there's a YouTube video that accompanies every section. Or, you know, I do do Zoom classes as well. I do classes over the internet. If you want details of prices and uh, courses, etc., with actual classes with me, uh, you know, let me know in the comments, um, and we'll get. Uh, we, I can give you the details. So this is level one. Then we have level two, and level two goes into past tenses. Um, uh, I call level two the pain barrier because it's probably the hardest level. Wait, just let me click that down. Oops, come back to one. So level two for the past tenses. Level three for future tenses, some pronouns, practicing. Don't forget that each book you're also practicing what you've done in the previous book. So it's a progression. It's, uh, you know, uh, the, the book sort of goes, it's very, very, uh, what's the word, sequential. It goes through different uh, points. And, it, you know, you don't just because you've moved on to something else, you don't just forget about all the things you did before. Each book just builds on what you already know. Uh, level four, which is the subjunctive. If you're a beginner, don't be worrying about the subjunctive because <laughs> it will frighten you. But if you're a bit more advanced, you'll know what the subjunctive is. And so those levels one, two, four are all the levels, the grammar that you need really to be able to speak good Spanish. Don't forget the Spanish I teach. It's not university Spanish. The people who learn Spanish with me, it's not that they're going to do a degree at university. They want to communicate. Either they live in Spain or they want to go traveling or they're just hot for holidays, etc. But it's more than holiday Spanish. I want to make that clear. You will learn how to speak proper Spanish, but not to the sense of a university level. Grammar is important and it is a grammar-based course. But it's need, I call it need to know grammar. You don't need to know all the, uh, how far you take it is how far you want to take it. Some people do the level one. That gives them enough for what they need in their daily life or for whatever their reasons are for learning Spanish. Some pe people, if they need Spanish for work or for, you know, other things, they will go on to level two, level three, level four. So what I'm trying to say is level one will give you enough Spanish to have a conversation, but it'd be a basic conversation. And then the further you go on with the levels two, three, four, the higher level your Spanish will get to. And the final level at the moment, because uh, I'm sure there'll be more levels come out eventually, um, is level five. And level five is really 
a practice of all the things that are covered in levels one to four. And the, the practice is done in conversation practices, games, translations, crossword. I mean, you, you know, it's a bit of everything that you've learned, all different but you, you really need to be at the level four before you can do level five because you won't really know, uh, what's the word, you won't know the answers, basically. But, of course, the answers are in the back, but uh, you can't rely on the back. The back is for checking. Just let me make that clear as well. The back, uh, the answers being in the back is for uh, the purpose of checking your answers. If you're not actually learning with me and doing classes, you need to know the answers. The answers are in the back, but um, obviously you should try and do it yourself first and then just check the things you don't know, know in the back, not go straight to the back and look for the answer. Um, so, yeah, so that is my five levels. Now, uh, the other books that I have available are these little, uh, these are like little storybooks, dual language books. So if you want to practice again what you already know, and you've got the English and the Spanish next to each other. Princess Tia's Great Adventure. Oh, sorry, I didn't read out. This is Duque El Rey, Peter El Tonto, Savanda Vacaciones. Princess Tia's Great Adventure. They're all bilingual. Rocky the Rebe uh, Rebel, Rocky El Rebelde. And then the last book that I just want to tell you about, which actually isn't anything to do with Spanish, but if you're watching on my Spanish channel, this is a little bit more about me and my story of how I came to live in Spain and become a Spanish teacher. Uh, and if you're watching from Vicky Marie Chats, this might help you to understand how I got interested in true crime stalking because i had a, a, a very serious stalking incident when i was younger um anything and also there's some funny anecdotes in there about my experiences being a teacher and an interpreter here in spain um just some details about my my story and then some sort of anecdotal sort of stories about uh you know what what it's been like being a Spanish teacher or an interpreter here in Spain. So Confessions of a Spanish Teacher, if you want to know a little bit more about me in particular. Rocky the Rebel, Princess Tears, Great Adventure. These are bilingual storybooks, Duque El Rey. And then going back through the levels, five, four, three, two, one. And uh, all these books are available on Amazon and they're available on any Amazon site. So it doesn't matter where, matter where you live. If you live in Britain, if you live in Spain, if you live in America, if you live in Australia, if you live in Abu Dhabi, uh, these books are available on every Amazon site. If you're not sure what level you need to be, if you've done some Spanish, if you've not done any Spanish before, it's easy. You start with level one. If you know a little bit of Spanish, but you're not quite sure, uh, you probably would be level one as well. But if you know quite a lot of Spanish, but maybe you're not sure whether it should be level two or level three, or, you know, if you get in touch with me, I will help you decide which level you want. And if you're interested in doing any Spanish classes with me, uh, let me know and I can send you all the details of the courses and um, yeah so there you go just wanted to uh, let people know what I do um, and because it's new year and new year is always a popular time to learn languages so if there's any out of you out there who would like to learn Spanish please let me know and uh, if you want to learn with me or you can just go ahead and order the books on Amazon. And if you, if, if while you're doing the books, you have any problems, because I do do live streams as well uh, on a Friday afternoon, which uh, they stopped over the Christmas period, but will be starting again, not this Friday, but the Friday after, uh, where people can ask questions, etc. And we can just generally chat about learning Spanish. Um, so. Yeah, that's it. So depending on which channel you're watching from, remember to live and love wisely and carefully. Or on the other channel, I always say, what do I always say on the Spanish channel? Uh, until I see you. Um, yeah, 
hasta la próxima vez or something like that. It's funny, I've got to be in that uh, mode, you know, it's hard to go between the two modes. But on both of the channels, I always say, I'll see you again really soon in the next video. So, hasta pronto en el próximo video. And until then, y hasta entonces, may your God go with you. Que tu Dios vaya contigo. Thank you. Bye.